Cat 31, welcome to example two. Let's give one of these, these ellipses a, a, another try. All right, so we're gonna find traits and graph this ellipse. Now, if I take a look at this formula, it's not in standard form because the right side of this equation is not equal to one. It's equal to 441. Okay, in a moment I'll, 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 I'll fix that. But take a look at all of the traits that you're responsible for. We're gonna find the center, the vertices, the co-vertices, or sometimes referred to as the indices, the foci, the lengths of the major axis, the lengths of the minor axis. Oops, excuse me, you can't even see all of that because there's so many of them in here. All right, if I keep on scooching this up, and then we've got domain and range. Okay, so before we get going on any of that, let's go ahead and start manipulating this equation. So I'm just gonna give myself a little space here and I wanna take my ellipse as given to me and I wanna divide by 441. I'm gonna divide every term by 441 so that I can get my equation into standard form. Now, if I'm not sure about 49 over 441, take it to your calculator, right? If I take a look at that, well, that doesn't look like anything I want, but I'll turn it into a fraction. I see it's 1 9th. So this is gonna become x squared over nine. All right, let's do nine divided by 441. And that's gonna be one over 49. And that's gonna be equal to one. Okay, great. So once you get this going, your next game plan, and let me scooch this up just so I have enough room to work this. I have a feeling I'm gonna be scooching a lot for this problem. All right, once you get this happening, your next game plan, or the next part of the plan is to find A, B, and C. All right, so this is great, right? I'll put a little happy face here. But now, find A, B, and C. All right, so how do we pick those apart? Well, A is always associated with the larger of these two numbers. So I see right here a 49. So I know A squared is equal to 49, which means B squared must be equal to nine. And that's gonna tell me A and B. So now I know A is seven and B is three. All right, so I have two of my three letters. In order to find C, right, we know the formula C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared, which is gonna tell me that C squared is equal to 49 minus nine, which is 40. So that's gonna tell me C is equal to the square root of 40 Again, technically C could be equal to the positive or negative square root of 40, but C has to be a distance. So that's gonna be the square root of 40. I can take the four out of there and I'm looking at two root 10. All right, now if I crunch that number on my calculator, just so we have some feelings around this, two root 10 is equal to about 6.3. So I want you to keep these numbers in mind because, I, again, I'm going to be scooching my paper up and down. But A is 7, B is 3, C is 6.3, and here's my equation. X squared plus Y squared, excuse me, X squared over 9 plus Y squared over 49 is equal to 1. Now the first thing to take note of is there's no numbers attached to X and Y, which means my center's going to be the origin. And as I had said before, the first few examples, I'm going to put the center at the origin just so the formulas are a little bit easier to work with. So let me move this back down. All right. And let's see what we got to work with here. Okay, so my center in this case is the origin. Okay. I'm gonna label and scale the axes. All right. Now my center was the origin. I'm just gonna put all of this information here so we have it. We knew A was seven. B was three and C was two root 10. Okay, so since A was seven and it was associated with the Y variable, because if you remember, we ultimately had Y squared over 49, that was the larger of the two um, numbers. So since Y, excuse me, A was with the Y variable, from my center of the origin, I'm gonna move up and down seven units. So let me go two, four, six, seven and I will go down seven units, two, four, six, seven. All right, those are going to be my vertices, okay? So as I think about my vertices, again, 
If a is 7 and I'm moving up and down, does up and down motion affect your x-coordinate or your y-coordinate? Well, up and down motion affects your y-coordinate. So my vertices are going to be 0, 7, and then 0, negative 7. Okay. On the flip of that, b was 3. 3, or b, I should say, was associated with my x variable. And just to remind you why I'm saying this, because we had x squared over 9 plus y squared over 49 was equal to 1. So I'm getting the 3 from here because b squared is 9. So b is 3. It's, it's associated with my x variable. x's move you left, right. So I'm going to go 3 units right and 3 units left from the origin. Okay? So you can see that my co-vertices, or sometimes they're referred to as index intercepts, excuse me, um, my co-vertices, my intercepts, are 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. Because when you move left, right, you affect your x coordinate. So we're going to 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. Okay? All right. With that, with just those two, you can actually draw your ellipse. Okay. So taking a look at that, I'm almost there, except I still need my foci. Now your foci, they go with the letter C. And I don't know if this is the, it's not the greatest thing to think of, but I always remember there was a C in foci and a C here. And then you might say, well, hey, nut job, like there's a C in center and a C in vertices. I, I know, I'm not saying it worked. I just remembered a C goes with foci. So that's how I remember these went together. Now your foci are always along the major axis. All right, and my major axis, it's associated with the larger number, right, A, and A was under the Y, so my major axis is vertical. So I'm gonna go C units up and C units down. And we had said C was about 6.3. So if I was at 6.3, it'd be like around here and around here. And your foci will always be pretty close to your vertices, all right, but they're gonna be along the major axis. But again, if I'm moving up and down, is that changing my X coordinate or my Y coordinate? Well, it's my Y coordinate. So my foci will be zero square root of, not 21, excuse me, zero, two root 10, and then zero, negative two root 10. All right, so let's just reiterate this. Once you figure out A, B, and C, A has got to either be horizontal or vertically related, right? In this case, it's vertically related because it's under the Y's. So that means my major axis is vertical. So I'm gonna move up and down A units from my center. When I move up and down, it affects my Y coordinates. On the flip of that, B is three. Three is under the X variable. I'm gonna move left and right three units from the center. All right, but when I move left and right, that affects my X coordinate, which is why you see my X coordinate changing off of my center to get to my co-vertices. Foci are always along your major axis. And in this case, that's vertical. So I'm gonna move up, down, C units from my center. All right, so I'm gonna change this Y coordinate to two root 10 and negative two root 10 respectively. So here are the letters playing out. For the vertices, you move A units. For the co-vertices, you move B units. And for the foci, you move C units, okay? All right, so let's, let's keep on going with this. I'm gonna scooch this up some more. Okay, now this is asking for the length of the major axis. The length of the major axis is always two A units. Well, A in this case was seven, so the length of the major axis is 14 because I went seven units here, seven units here. All right. The length of the minor axis is always two B units. In this case, B was three, so two times three is six because I went three plus three, six units, all right? All right, I'm gonna scooch this up just a little bit more. Keep in mind, they're asking me about domain and range. I can't get both of these traits in view with the graph, but let's talk about the domain. If you look left to right, it looks like I'm going from negative three to positive three. And when I go down to up, it looks like I'm dealing with Y coordinates of negative seven to positive seven. They're all inclusive because I actually hit those Y values in my graph. All right, so when I take a look at this, my domain is from negative three to three, and then my range is from negative seven to seven. All right, and this isn't a function. Ellipses aren't functions. They don't pass the vertical line test, but I can still get all of those traits. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip to the next example. 
and we're gonna leave behind our centers being nice and at the origin here, All right? We're gonna have to complete a square to find our center and things are gonna get that much more complicated once your center moves away from your origin. So we're gonna play all of these ellipses traits out with an equation that is not in standard form that we need to complete the square to get into standard form and then our center won't be at the origin anymore. So it's gonna be a good time. All right, so I will catch you in a little bit. Thanks so much, bye.